Today, as we celebrate the power and place of story in our lives, the Children's Book Council of Australia acknowledges and extends its appreciation to the traditional custodians of the lands across which we virtually meet. I join you from the lands of the Jar Jar Wurrung, and I pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, as well as the elders, past, present and emerging, of the lands from which you are joining us. For they hold the memories, the traditions, the culture and the hopes for Australia's first peoples. Sovereignty was never ceded, always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Hi and welcome to the CBC A Book of the Year Award. I would like to introduce you to Margot Hillel. Thank you Archie for that delightful welcome. You know what they say about working with children and animals and here am I, bookended between Archie and students from various schools who will talk to us about what reading and books mean to them in often thoughtful and moving ways. But I did just want to add my welcome to you all to this celebration of Australian creators of literature for young people. I hope you'll enjoy it. We can't be together as we couldn't for the shortlist, but it is a joy to be able to celebrate in this way. Our children, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, they all work well together. He meant a pink foreleg that snorted through its flat, friendly nose. The joys of friendship, the love of family, and how it feels to be one little soldier. Oh, it's a statue. Each room changed colour. Every colour had a name. Books, they also tell you about the history, about your family back then and everything. About people, what they did back then, how they survived and how they and how they lived. Riding the ship on their way. Without reading, there would be no such thing as talking. Pine cones are rich with seed. I think reading is good because you can get smart and when you grow up you'll be really good and you'll get a good job. One of the things which we really enjoy is watching those children make the choice to learn and then being able to celebrate that success as well. So generally everybody's involved in that celebration, uh, particularly with our reading levels, we really celebrate those a lot. Goodbye house, hello house. It's been helping me throughout like this whole COVID thing, so like to just keep me on learning and everything. They remain tucked inside their hideaways. Success comes when their children walk through this gate. Mm. Our feeding committees. And it's not only the children, it's the teachers that, you know, wake up. Like, you know, I'm like myself, I wake up every morning for these children, that's it. Crocodile was fat. She pulled a pair of plastic gloves from the pocket. Goodbye, my home in the corner. It's, it's pretty addictive, isn't it, to, to just continue to do well. They crept up to see a big fruit bag from the top of the tree. That it is, it's kind of contagious in that regard and you know, we, want, we want to keep that ball rolling as, as long as we can. As soon as they see me walking to the shed, you can hear all these little ones, Nan, good morning, Nan, good morning. That's why I come here, because of the children. Turtle raced out the door. Well, they're our future. So what we teach them, you know, what our future's going to be. I know. You know, I, and I wouldn't believe that, you know, these children are going to all work together. It's the same way that we all grew up, I own. Yeah. You know, I grew up at this, in this, went to the same school. You know, be something that um, someone in your family hasn't been. Young people understand that the future belongs to them. That's why they want to make a world that's fair and decent, a natural environment that's healthy. To make this better, safer world, we need sharp thinkers fresh ideas and a lot more empathy. We need young people who are curious enough and brave enough to see things differently in order to create change. And that means we need readers. Readers are leaders. Readers are friends. Readers are dreamers. Readers are weirdos. Readers are rebels. And I say thank goodness for readers, for where there are readers, 
there's hope. The shortlist of titles for the CBCA Book of the Year 2020 Older Reader category are C.G. Drews, The Boy Who Steals Houses, published by Hachette Australia. Helena Fox, How It Feels to Float, published by Pan Macmillan Australia. Lisa Fuller, Ghost Bird, published by the University of Queensland Press. Malin Nunn, When the Ground is Hard, published by Alan and Unwin. Astrid Shelter, Four Dead Queens, published by Alan and Unwin. And Vicky Wakefield, This is How We Change the Ending, published by Text Publishing. The honour books are The Boy Who Steals Houses by C.G. Drews, published by Hachette Australia, and Ghost Bird by Lisa Fuller, published by University of Queensland Press. And the winner is Vicky Wakefield for This Is How We Change the Ending. Hi, I'm Vicky Wakefield, author of This Is How We Change the Ending, and I'm the gobsmacked and grateful recipient of this year's CBCA Book of the Year Award for Older Readers. I wrote the first few chapters of this novel almost four years ago in the middle of writing a completely different book, a fictional story, and I almost didn't go back to it because for me writing fiction is always easier than writing truth and I suspected this book was going to get ugly. And it did, ugly in the sense that writing Nate's story was always going to be uncomfortable for me and it was. What's the book about? Well, if you've ever felt the urge to lock your car doors and wind the windows up when you pass through certain suburbs, then that's where this book is set. If you've ever met kids who appear tough and prickly and aimless, that's who this book is about. And if you are that kid trying to figure out who you are and what you stand for and how it's possible to make choices when your options seem limited, then you're who this book is for. I'm often asked where I write and I think it's important to have a place that is peaceful and beautiful. Bird song is good. But I'm in the business of telling the truth, so here's where I write. Currently undergoing renovations and proof that it's possible to write just about anywhere, even in the midst of chaos. I thought I'd share a few passages with you to give you a sense of who Nate is as a person. You have to accept tough love, talk tough, toughen up, tough it out, be a tough nut to crack. And when the going gets tough, sure, get going, but don't think you can leave. Just make it through this moment and then the next and the one after that. I repeat this all the way home until I get to the flats and I see Margie sitting on the top step alone. I think moments are the problem. I've never been able to see past the next one. So I want to say congratulations to Helena, Kate, Marla, Lisa and Astrid. I have loved reading your stories. My thanks to the CPCA for the important work you do to champion Australian books for children and to the wonderful judges who give so much of their time to read our work. To my publisher, Text, and my editor, Penny Houston, this book would not have been possible without you. And to my fellow creators, our world is pretty chaotic right now, and we need art and literature more than ever to remind us who we are and what we live for. Thank you for your stories. of remote learning 2020, you know, the uh, the challenges, the triumphs, you know, all we've yeah. been through. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Woo. Uh, you know what's going on in that CBCA video we're doing? 
I hope so. Have a great night, everybody. Hi everyone, Eddie Wu here, high school mathematics teacher and author of Wu's Wonderful World of Maths. Since I'm an educator, it probably doesn't surprise you to hear that when I think about the power of books, the first place my mind goes is that they are amazing instruments for learning. Now, obviously books help us to discover new things, new objects, new experiences, new places. Well, one of the most amazing things about books, I think, is that they help us to not only inhabit other people's thoughts, but also to embrace other people's emotions. And in that way, Books are an incredibly useful tool for helping us develop empathy, and that's something that we need worldwide more now than ever. And that's why I'm very delighted to read out the shortlisted titles for the Younger Reader category. They are The Little Wave by Pip Harry, published by University of Queensland Press. The Thing About Oliver by Deborah Kelly, published by Wombat Books. The Dog Runner by Bren McDibble, published by Alan and Unwin. Catch a Falling Star by Meg McKinley, published by Walker Books Australia. The Glim by Emily Rodder and illustrated by Mark McBride, published by Scholastic Australia. And lastly, The Secrets of Magnolia Moon by Edwina Wyatt and illustrated by Catherine Quinn, published by Walker Books Australia. The honour books are The Glim by Emily Rodder, illustrated by Mark McBride and published by Scholastic Australia and The Secrets of Magnolia Moon by Edwina Wyatt, illustrated by Catherine Quinn, published by Walker Books Australia. And the winner is The Little Wave by Pip Harry. Congratulations, Pip. I'm so delighted to accept this award. I want to thank the CPCA. You're a national treasure for the work you do in spotlighting diverse and beautiful books for children in Australia. I want to thank the judges for your hard work my team at UQP, especially Christina Schultz, Vanessa Pellet, and Mark McLeod for brilliant editing. I want to thank my family for their support and love. And I want to thank all the readers, the booksellers, librarians and teachers, for keeping reading on the essential activity list in this really tough year. I hope to see you next year at Book Week, but have a great one next week. Hi. This is my neighbourhood, this is the east coast of Singapore and I've lived here for about five years with my family. The idea for Little Wave actually came when I was sitting on the beach in Manly, Sydney. I'm a long way from there now and I really miss the big, big surf, I miss the space and I miss seeing all you kids reading and being able to visit schools. I work in a really interesting place called the Arab Quarter or Kampong Glam. I thought I might show you around because it's super interesting, lots of street art and culture and history. So hey, I'm just at Haji Lane, which is one of Singapore's most colourful neighbourhoods. There's lots of live music and just people hanging out. This is my local library and I love to come down here, sometimes with my daughter and we just grab books and just read and get inspired. So why do I write for children? The answer is really simple. They're the best readers. They're curious and inquisitive, they ask great questions, and they really care about the story and the characters. So believe it or not, this is my backyard pool. I love to come down here and swim laps, and it's where I get all my best book ideas. So morning, I'm at a hawker centre, which are outdoor eating places all over Singapore. It's where you go if you just want great local food uh, from all different cultures, Indian, Chinese, Malay. Uh, this morning I'm having an Indian breakfast. I'm having roti prata and curry dipping sauce. Why does reading matter for children and young adults? I think it's a really good friend for them. It's a place they can go to discover and learn and find new worlds. And also for me as an author, it's where they can find empathy and compassion. I like to put my readers into a similar world to the one that they live in but give them a different lens to look at that world. But I wanted to share a poem sent to me by Amelia, who's in grade three. It seemed to sum up why I write books and maybe why children like to read them. Writing a fiction story is like creating a world, piece by piece, and your head forgets who you really are. Reading's just a fun and total. You can just run away anywhere but stay in the same place. I feel like 
I can't get out, so I try to feel better by reading books so I can just let all my worries melt away. It's a good way to pass time, especially now. It helped me through my parents' divorce and it helped me escape. It was an escape from reality and it allowed me to kind of experience things that I hadn't experienced before and to kind of travel all over the world in someone else's body. Because you can learn so many new things and you can just let your imagination run wild. Reading really helps with your English. So if you've read a lot, you've learned a lot of words and it helps with your um, social skills and your talking skills. But also, I think reading, it's all about just having your own time and having a time away from screens because we're all, we're all attached to screens nowadays and just allowing your eyes to have that resting time on hard pages is like, I think it's really important. For me, I think empathy. I think it just, um, literature is just a way, especially in like our like world climate. I think being able to hear someone else's story from their perspective um, be it cultural, political, anything, or um, I think that is the most important part of reading because it, it lets people tell their stories and their side of the story. Well, I think reading is important because you can use your imagination. It's just so important to just human culture. Stories are just so essential to humanity. Books have all the answers that humans ever need, and it, in lots of books, help creativity and imagination. I think reading is important for any age, especially when you're younger because um, at that age you're influenced by so many things. My dad doesn't really read, but sometimes my mum reads on airplanes. I love reading and I have a favourite book that I loved when I was about six years old and it's this book here and you can tell it's very very old. It's probably about 60 years old so that's pretty old but I, you can see that it's a little bit battered and that's because I read it so often or had my parents read it to me and I loved the stories and there was one story about a little girl who was allowed to play with a box and inside the box was something very, very special. And the book's called The Silver Thimble. So what do you think might have been the really special thing that she found in the box? It was a silver thimble. I hope that you all love books just as much as I do because reading books is fun. Sometimes it makes you really happy because you laugh at the book. Sometimes it makes you sad. But it's so good to sit down, especially on a cold winter's night, or maybe when you're snuggled into bed, and to get a book out. So I suggest to you that you, when you're my age, you might keep one of your special books now, and you'll be able to show it to your children. And I've showed this little book to my grandson, and I hope that he's going to enjoy me reading it to, to him as much as I enjoyed reading it. The shortlist for the early childhood category is We're Stuck by Sue DeGenero, published by Scholastic Australia. One Runaway Rabbit, written by David Metzenthin, and illustrated by May Reed Murphy, published by Alan and Unwin. Bat vs. Poss, written by Alexa Moses, and illustrated by Anil Tortop, published by Hashett Australia. When Billy Was My Dog, written by Kirsty Murray, and illustrated by Karen Blair, published by Alan and Irwin. My Friend Fred, written by Francis Watts and illustrated by R. Yee, published by Alan and Unwin. Goodbye House, Hello House, written by Margaret Wilde and illustrated by Anne James, published by Alan and Unwin. The honour books are When Billy Was a Dog, written by Kirsty Murray and illustrated by Karen Blair, published by Alan and Unwin. And Goodbye House, Hello House, written by Margaret Wilde and illustrated by Anne James. Published by Alan and Unwin. The winner is My Friend Fred by Francis Watts and R. Yee. Congratulations. I'd really like to thank Anne Yee who has 
just illustrated Fred so wonderfully. It's been an absolute delight. And to our amazing and inspirational publisher, Anna McFarlane, who brought us together, and everyone at Allen and Unwin. It's just been the most wonderful experience. I'm so happy to share this book with everyone there. Uh, I'd also like to say that it has meant so much this year, especially to see my friend Fred recognised in a, a year like this when more than ever, I think it's important that we all look after each other no matter who we are, no matter what our, our differences, we're all in this together. The inspiration for my friend Fred came from, well, my own first friend who was actually like Fred, a sausage dog. But it also made me think about how friends are not always the people who are the same as you. You can also love friends for their differences, like Fred and his friend. I'd say actually the message of my friend Fred is that you should be open to all kinds of people and uh, look for people's differences and celebrate those instead of feeling that you can only like people who are just like you. I don't actually see the characters physically in my head when I write. What I, I do is I feel them, I feel what the character is like and the magic of working with an illustrator is when the illustrator shows you visually the character that you saw in your head and that's very much what happened when Anne Yi first showed me the, the, the pictures from her very first roughs of Fred. He was just perfect. I think the appeal of my friend Fred is it comes from Fred himself, the character. He's such a, a cheeky, charming, exuberant uh, character who loves life and I think we can all find joy in that. I live in a very little house and I work in a very little room, just a lounge room, surrounded by books. And even though it's a small space, it actually is an enormous space because in all these books there are so many worlds, so many friends, so many ideas, so many adventures. So as long as you have books around you, you're always in a large space. Hello, I'm Sean Tan, here to announce the winner of the CBCA Picture Book of the Year Award for 2020. And what a difficult and challenging year it's been for most of us. Also worth noting the extent to which the excellent notable and shortlisted books of this year deal with crisis, coping with crisis and the search for optimism and hope. Many of them are about loneliness, the need for connection under difficult circumstances, both between people and animals and ideas, as well as historical memory. Um, but that's so often the case with literature and it's the problems of life that I think always draw us back to books as a way of being able to reflect and make sense of unexpected things that are always going to happen to us. I was always so excited as a young student about the CBCA shortlist and the little display that would be at my school library, um, mostly how strikingly different all the books were. And they often inspired me to make my own books, beginning in primary school, around the age of about eight or nine. And among other things, I became very aware through the CBCA Awards and studying the books there, that picture books especially, um, but all books, are made by people like you, uh, people like me, uh, working in small rooms, um, working on desks with ideas and words and materials that are not so different from what you would find in your own school desk or desk in your own bedroom. Um, and that continues to inspire me. They're not that difficult to do as long as you put your mind to it and have a good imagination. Um, so without further ado, let's have a look at some of these Weird Imaginations. Here's the shortlisted titles for the picture book category. Hello Lighthouse by Sophie Blackall, published by Hachette Australia. Nop by Caroline McGill, published by Walker Books Australia. I Need a Parrot by Chris McKimmy, published by Ford Street Publishing. Three 
by Stephen Michael King, published by Scholastic Australia. The Good Son, a story from the First World War told in miniature by Jules Ober and Felicity Coonan with text by Pierre-Jacques Ober, published by Walker Books Australia. Tilly by Anna Walker, with text by Jane Godwin, published by Scholastic Australia. And the honour books are Nop by Caroline McGurl, published by Walker Books Australia, and Three by Stephen Michael King, published by Scholastic Australia. And the winner is, drum roll, I Need a Parrot by Chris McKimmy. So congratulations, Chris. Congratulations, Ford Street Publishing. Well done. And congratulations to all the authors and illustrators and publishers of the shortlisted titles. I must say, it's been a really strong year for picture books, I'm pleased to see. And um, these are all excellent books, um, certainly worth reading and choosing your own winner. Bye. It must be hard for the CBCA to pick someone to be the best book of the year and I'm pretty glad it's me this year round. So I'd like to thank the CBCA for all the work they do promoting children's books and bringing attention in particular to the role of books in children's lives. I'd also like to thank my wife, uh, best friend and lover of many, many years, Jackie McKimmy, who's also my most acerbic critic at times. In particular, I'd like to thank Paul Collins of Ford Street Publishing, who put out I Need a Parrot. Nan McNabb was a great editor for me in working on I Need a Parrot. She brought a lot of sense to what I was doing and she understood exactly what the book was about. A very, very big thanks to my grandkids. All have helped in one way or another. My eldest grandson, Alex, once said, you know, Granddad's lucky to have us. Without us, he couldn't write his books. And that's probably pretty true. It's sort of like music. When, you, when you're drumming and you're in a band, there's a lot of time when you're just sort of going along, but there are times when it kind of clicks. And it's the same with drawing, and it's the same with writing, you know? When you just put two things together that sort of don't really belong, and it just works. That's, you know, what I like about what I do and it applies to everything I do, drawing, doodling. When I got my first job at the West Australian Press, every payday, as it was called then, I'd go into town, St George's Terrace, to a bookshop and buy a picture book for our son, Dylan. It was then I became very interested in picture books. Books have a whole different purpose for different reasons. I was talking to a friend and they mentioned that their son was doing a project called I Need a, or I Need a Parrot for school and um, went through this whole thing about how the kids said this and this and that and that. So for some reason that connected with me. When I realised uh, how the ending was going, going to work for uh, I Need a Parrot, I realised I could use images from my books from the 70s, which I did, you know, when he, the boy says he's going to teach the parrot to dance and to whatever, you know, talk, you know, those come from those books. The one thing I would say is don't worry about rejection, you know. A lot of my books have been rejected. When I was younger, my mother would always try to get me to read because she knew that her and also my father you know, came from a small third world, third world country and so they really wanted us to get into it, you know, to build up our academic skills and whatnot because as parents they would want the best for us, right? So they'd always buy me books and stuff but to be honest, me now, I'm a lousy teenager. <laughs> yeah, so like, you know, I understand and will admit that obviously reading helps us learn but aside from academics, you know, my love for reading in a way is to learn about perspectives because that's just one of my values. I like to see things like how other people perceive them and then take that into consideration and account for it. 
personally for me, I find it so enthralling. Like it takes you out of like the world, especially with COVID. It takes you away from all this, you know, trapped inside and brings you to a whole nother world and lets you, you know, escape. I used to love reading um, like migrant books. So like Ando, people like that. Um, I, w I wasn't a migrant, but I could understand because my family, we, we all came from Pakistan, but I could understand where they were coming from and understand like the struggles coming to a new country, facing a new culture, you know, the barriers between them and like you not being able to speak English and stuff like that like, because my parents don't speak English, so I understand how difficult it might be for them. And yeah, reading those type of books really puts me in that in a perspective that I was never shown, so it sheds light to a new area. When I was a young child, I was very intrigued of how they would put the stories and the pictures of how they fit together. Once you get into the reading industry, like when you're familiar with the books that you read, you'll be able to open out with the world. Yes, there was a book that I read when I was younger. It sort of made through a sense of what I was going through, but in somebody else's point of view, so the opposite's point of view instead of my point of view. It made me realize that I'm not the only one out there with challenges and the world's infinite and comes with all its challenges and you just have to roll with them and get through them somehow. When I first came to Australia, I didn't know any English. I was, I felt so lonely. I didn't know the language, the culture. And reading books, you know, you start from easy ones, just like the Hungry Little Caterpillar. It was, it was you know, being kids, it was really fun to read the pictures. Is visually it was very aesthetic and you start off small you, and then you get to know more words and then you get more complex and I get to know more English and I'm able to communicate with more people, people in Australia. And that doesn't mean being Australian is about speaking English though, know, but it just it helps you in, uh, um, assimilate into society. Being in, in a, um, a senior high school there's just so much stress and then in year 11, they always talk about your future, what are you going to do in the future. It's, it's really stressful and reading a book just gives you, like you li just live in the moment. That, it's just that one few times that you just live in the moment. You don't have to think about anything and you just imagine this world, this, this beautiful... <laughs> you don't even have to try to imagine it. The words and the rhythm that the, the writers create, it's just it's right there, you read it and then it just comes along. Hi, I'm Rihanna from ABC Radio and when I think of my love of books, I think back to primary school, which is probably where it started. And we had no bookstores because I grew up in a very remote area on the western side of Cape York Peninsula in Queensland. And these book catalogues would arrive at school throughout the year at different times. And my mother would encourage my sister and I to pick a couple of books and we'd pour over these catalogues, looking at the covers, deciding if we kind of in, were invested in the story and we wanted to buy it. And then they would arrive in the post and we'd get that chance to just dive in and consume this book. And it was my favourite time of the year. But I also grew up listening to stories that my mum would read us uh, before we went to bed, taking us to the Enchanted Forest, talking to us about the magical faraway tree from Enid Blyton. And we'd meet these characters like Moonface and Saucepan Man, and then when I got to high school, I was transported to the English Moors in Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. And I think, you know, when I think about the power of reading and the power of books, learning as well is something that I think you don't think enough about. But for me, books were so vital to me learning about things like numbats, uh, facts about Farlap and this aircraft called the SR-71, which is also known as the Blackbird. And without books, I wouldn't have been able to learn what I did about these things. And I think the other really important thing about the power of books and the power of reading is that you're whisked away to another world, that these worlds are built for you by authors to immerse yourself in, to go on the journeys that you might be going on. And sometimes they give you a glimpse at things that you didn't even know existed. But enough about me. It's time for the shortlisted titles for the Eve Pownell category. And they are The Illustrated Encyclopedia of Ugly Animals by Sammy Bailey, published by Hachette Australia, Searching for Cicadas by Leslie Gibbs, illustrated by Judy Watson, published by Walker Books Australia. A Hollow is a Home by Abby Mitchell, illustrated by Astrid Hicks, published by CSIRO Publishing. 
Willam, A Birrarung Story by Arnie Joy Murphy and Andrew Kelly, illustrated by Lisa Kennedy, published by Walker Books Australia. Young Dark Emu, A Truer History by Bruce Pascoe, published by Magabala Books. And Yahoo Creek, An Australian Mystery by Toby Riddle, published by Alan and Unwin. And the honour books are The Illustrated Encyclopedia of Ugly Animals by Sammy Bailey, published by Hachette Australia. And Willem, A Birrarung Story by Auntie Joy Murphy and Andrew Kelly, illustrated by Lisa Kennedy, published by Walker Books Australia. And the winner is Young Dark Emu! Yeah! My name's Bruce Pascoe. I'm a Ewan Bunurong Tasmanian man. This is my second youngest grandchild, Charlie. This is my oldest dog, Yambala, and his sister, Wangra Bell. The CBCA Awards are the Miles Franklin of Children's Awards. Incredibly important for writers and readers and um, I'm, I'm really proud to have won the award for Young Dark Emu because it tells a story that I've always wanted my grandchildren to learn. But not just my grandchildren, I want all Australian children to learn about their country, to investigate their country. This beautiful country of ours, Australia, it's a stunning land and we're, we're hurting the land with the way we conduct agriculture, the way we ignore Aboriginal history and culture. And it's this generation that will save our planet and save our country and save our culture. So to be able to uh, have a, a prize like this for Young Dark Emu to encourage mothers, grandfathers, grandmothers and fathers, aunts and uncles to buy the, the book for their children so that they can tell their children and grandchildren the story of Australia. That's as much as I ever wanted in my life. So th this award is really important to me, um, but it's also important to my family and um, my dogs, of course, because they can't read. They have to have it read to them. But this one is called Yambala, after Mount Yambala. This one is called Wongrabel, after Wongrabel. These are Aboriginal spirit names, and they were born there. They were born on that country, so these dogs are spirit dogs. And although they can't, be re can't read, I'm sure that Charlie will read it to them one day. And the ducks, and the horses. Um, because it's a story of our country and all of us here um, need to love our country. Uh, thank you very much. Hey everyone, it's Daniel Gray Barnett here. I'm here to announce the 2020 CBCA Award for New Illustrator. I really love this category. I think it's terrific that we've got an award that celebrates emerging illustration talent because being an illustrator is such a unique and powerful thing. It fills such an important role in our cultures and illustrations what got me hooked on books and storytelling and it plays such a vital role in growing young readers. So the shortlisted titles for the 2020 CBCA Award for New Illustrator are Grant Cowan for Louie and Snippy Save the Sea, published by Burbay Publishing, Bethany MacDonald for Paperboy, published by Dirt Lane Press, Jess Bentgeechen for Fly, published by Penguin Random House Australia, Leanne Morgo Watson for Kui Midigar, a story in Darug Songlines, published by Mugabala Books, Jasmine Seymour for Baby Business, published by Mugabala Books, and Johnny Wakach and Malabar for Little Bird's Day, published by Mugabala Books. And the winner is Jasmine Seymour for Baby Business, published by Mugabala Books. Congratulations Jasmine, and to everyone on the shortlist. I hope you can all find a way to celebrate these terrific achievements. Well done. Thank you, Didgeridgore. This, this award means so much. I, I'm shocked that I've received it and I'm so full of gratitude. 
And I, I love that people have loved this little book. And I'd like to say thank you especially to my dear friend Leanne Watson from the Durrick Custodian Aboriginal Corporation. Thank you for the inspiration and friendship. And I'd like to thank Magabala for, for really supporting this book. Um, and, and my Nana, because this is about her place. This book was about her place. Budri Nami Nuluyin Darug Nurua. Ngaya Jasmine Buruburango Darug Nura. Good to see you here on Darug Country. I am Jasmine from the kangaroo people who belong to Darug Country. I pay my respects to my ancestors, the Darug people, and I pay my respects and acknowledge all Aboriginal elders past, present and future. What are me? Dali Moralia. Welcome to Moralia. Baby business is about a baby smoking ceremony on Darug country. A smoking ceremonies are, are, are things that Aboriginal people do to welcome people to country. And baby smoking ceremonies are really important and special rites of passage for people. I wanted it to be in a contemporary way as well because, you know, a lot of things we see about Aboriginal people are in the past and we're not living in the past, we're contemporary people and we might not look like we did you know, hundreds of years ago, but we're still here and we're still practicing that connection to culture. I am currently in the library position at my school and uh, I know that kindergarten are the biggest borrowers of books at my school and it is so important for them to see themselves reflected in these books. That's what the yam is like. And me and my brothers and my cousins would dig them up all the time when we were little. And the browns and the, the greens and even the, the quality of the light. This is what really inspired baby business. I love in children's picture books, real really sweet faces and the sweetness. And I've been a kindergarten teacher and, and I love that sort of um, innocence and, and joy in faces. And I really wanted that to be in the book and, and for, for Aboriginal kids especially, you know, them seeing this and knowing that that's about them has been just amazing. But, you know, other kids really love it as well because it's about place, you know, and we forget that we all belong here. This is our story. This is the story of this place. Thank you everybody for watching and helping us celebrate the Children's Book Council of Australia Book of the Year Awards for 2020. In such a difficult year, it's a joy to be able to share this with you. Thank you to everybody who helped to put it together. A special thank you to their excellencies, the Governor General and Mrs Hurley, our patrons. And thank you to all the technical team who helped to bring this to you today. And now back to Archie for our final goodbyes. Thanks, Margot, and everyone for watching our show. Happy reading. Bye.